Here are the five pillars for a new storm. Pillar one, the EU has committed itself to 20% renewable energy by 2020. That's a third of the electricity of Europe. We've got nine years to make the mandate. We're falling behind. That's pillar one. Pillar two, how do we collect these energies? Now, I do not oppose centralized solar and wind. They're essential to get us out of the carbon. But they're not sufficient. They're only going to be a small part of the third industrial revolution. We need them. They have to be there. But we begin to ask a question that seems so terribly simple now, it's almost embarrassing. If renewable energies are distributed, and they're found in every square inch of this planet in some frequency or proportion, why the hell would we only collect them in a few central points? An aha moment, pillar two. We have 191 million buildings in the European Union. Homes, offices, factories, infrastructure. The number one problem with climate change, buildings. They use a third of the energy and over a third of the CO2. Number one, buildings. 191 million buildings. Pillar two, we're going to convert every single building we can, 191 million buildings in the next 30 years across the 27 member states into a micropower plant that can convert the energy on site, the sun off the roof, the wind on the walls, the heat under the ground, the garbage, the agricultural waste, the ocean tides. This will jumpstart a construction boom. Real estate markets flat in Europe. This is going to create thousands and thousands of SMEs and millions and millions of jobs, two generations to convert the entire infrastructure, the real estate structure of Europe. The new buildings, positive power, they're already up. Axiona's in my group, Entrepreneurs is on my committee. He's got a zero emission building, it's drop dead gorgeous in Spain. Olivia Gui, Gui is in our group. They just put a positive power complex, office complex in the suburbs of Paris. It's beautiful, it creates more power than it needs. So, pillar one, renewables. Pillar two, we convert the infrastructure of the world to micro power plants. Then, pillar three, this was the one that was the tough one. How do we store this energy? The sun isn't always shining. The wind isn't always blowing. Sometimes it's blowing when we don't need it. These are intermittent energies. We need some form of storage. They're putting wind in California. Alan Lloyd's on my team. He used to be the EPA director there. Put in the wind. We're not getting it when we need it. We're losing three out of every four kilowatts. Under Manuel Barroso, we just introduced an eight billion public-private joint technology initiative for hydrogen. I'm in favor of all storage. Water pump, flywheels, batteries, capacitors, use them all. The reason I like hydrogen as a centerpiece, it's completely universal, it's modular, it's convertible, it's the basic element of the universe, it's the lightest element in existence, it's the stuff of the stars, and when you use it as a carrier for power, the only byproduct is water and heat. As you mentioned earlier in your opening talk, Charlie, the astronauts, the astronauts have been using high-tech hydrogen fuel cells for 30 years to power their ships. Time to bring it down to the United States of America. So, when the sun hits your roof, the wind hits the wall, generate the electricity. If you have some surplus you don't need, electrolyzed water, high school chemistry, hydrogen comes out of the fuel cell. When the sun's not shining, convert it back. Yes, it's an energy loss. But that's the second law of thermodynamics. Whenever we convert energy, we lose energy in the process. This energy loss at end site is infinitesimally small compared to the loss conversion in getting oil, coal, gas, and uranium to you. It isn't even close. In every part of the infrastructure in the world, I'm talking about every building that's converted to renewables has to have hydrogen infrastructure. All across, from the lamps out in our highways, to our bridges, hydrogen has to be in all the infrastructure embedded to go together with Pillar 1 and Pillar 2. They're seamless. That's millions of jobs and thousands of new business opportunities. Pillar 1, renewable energies, 20% of 30 electricity. Pillar 2, we convert the entire infrastructure and real estate structure of the planet into micro power plants. Pillar 3, we put in hydrogen across every single part of that infrastructure to store it so we have a reliable asset on peak and base load. Are you with me? Pillar 4 is where the communication revolution converges with the energy revolution. 
We use off-the-shelf internet technology, and we take the transmission lines and power grid of Europe and we convert them at a cost of one trillion, we need one trillion in the next 11 years, we convert them to an intergrid that acts exactly like the internet with internet off-the-shelf technology. So that when millions and millions of buildings are collecting their energy on site, storing it in hydrogen like we store media in digital, and then any surplus we don't need, the software directs it across the entire continent, 27 member states, from the Irish Sea to the doorsteps of Russia. Unless we discount the EU, let me just say, when we talk about G20, G8, G2, the European Union is the leading economy in the world. I know a lot of us think it's a place we go because it's an interesting museum. Not true. The GDP of the 27 member states of the European Union exceeds the GDP of the 50 states of the United States of America right now. 500 million people and another 500 million in our associated regions. If we create a seamless transport power and energy grid across a billion person market with renewables, building infrastructure converted to power plants, hydrogen as a storage vehicle like digital, internet connection, then we go to pillar five. We need logistical seamless infrastructure, that's transport. Electric plug-in vehicles are out here right now. Hydrogen vehicles are going to be out in three years. We've had the hydrogen buses operating in Europe for a number of years now. We know the technology works, as Charlie says. Now we need scale-up, no more pilots. We're tired of pilots. We need scale-up, it needs to be lateral. And so if we plug in, we can create a post-carbon logistics across continents. That's the five pillars, and let me say, these pillars, You've got to stop thinking of hydrogen fuel cell as a technology. It is a component. The technology is the system. You're a component in a new technological system. Infrastructures are the real technological systems that create new economic paradigms. Every one of these pillars has to move at the same speed as the other pillar, or else if it falls behind, the whole thing collapses and you lose all your money up front.